Hello, lovely educators. My name is Jen Foxbot, and as full disclosure, I work at Microsoft and my work does involve AI. Um, but I also am an educator and I know that AI is a little scary. And as an educator, I think it's really important that we teach folks, students of all ages, how to use AI as a tool. We also have an opportunity to get ahead of the kind of AI shenanigans and teach our students how to use it intentionally and in ways that enhance their learning instead of replace it. So if we incorporate AI into the classroom, into assignments and into our learning, then we can show our students, you know, let's not do what the lawyer did and just have it make things up and bring that to our job. Or, you know, let's not have it write our paper for us, but let's look at it as a collaborator, as a helper, as a co-pilot, as kind of our rubber ducky creative um, kind of like ideation board that we can spitball ideas with. So my first ask is that you let me know what you want to know about. You know, you're in the classroom, you're working with students. So I would love to, you know, what are your, what questions do you have about AI? What concerns do you have? What challenges are you running into? And what do you want to learn about? In the, this first video, I'll give you a few examples of ways that I think that you could incorporate it into the classroom. Um, obviously, please give me some feedback. Like, I would love to know what's actually helpful and what's not helpful. And then we can kind of tailor this video series to best meet your needs. All right, so here are some high level thoughts that I have. So, all right, so kind of like how Wikipedia is a really good starting point for research, we can use ChatGPT as a starting point for research. So for example, we can say, give me some resources to learn more about ancient cultures, ancient human cultures. All right, so one of the things I really like about ChatGPT as a starting point for learning more about a particular topic is that it will give a variety of resources. So for example, it gave us some books to check out, um, and, you know, some of the, like, you need to obviously double check that these are real books. Um, but uh, based on, you know, I've, I've read this one and uh, I know that this one is a real book. <laughs> so we're, we're starting out pretty good. Um, but that also can be a, a good learning exercise, right? Is fact check chat GPT. Ask it to give you some references and see if those references are real. Uh, but anyway, I also like that it gives us a variety of resources. So we have websites and other online resources, online courses, and then it says like, check out local museums and universities, which I think is a great recommendation. Okay, so that's uh, point number one. Use it kind of like Wikipedia as a starting point for research topics. We can also use it as a starting point when we have writer's block. So when I was a student, I just remember the worst part of writing a paper was staring at the blank page and just having no idea where to start. So we can use ChatGPT to help us get started. So let's say, uh, write an introduction to a history on rock climbing. And then we can take what ChatGPT uh, <laughs> gives us and edit it. This is a long introduction. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we can also use ChatGPT to improve the things that we're not very good at. So what I'm gonna say is make this more concise. And then I'm gonna paste what it gave me. All right, and so now it gives me a little bit of a shorter introduction. And we can take this and start to edit it and now we don't have a blank paper from which to start. We have something to go off on. And finally, my third recommendation is to use it for kind of those more um, creative things or as ways to engage your students in the world around them. So for example, um, 
uh, write a scav scavenger hunt for the city of, um, I don't know, I'll just pick my city. <laughs> Three to four hours. All right, well, so you could scope this down. Um, but you can give your students things like this, or you could say, write a scavenger hunt across the website of Wikipedia, or something like that. Um, so you can use it in creative ways as, um, or even if, you know, if you want your students to come up with activities for an event for the school, let's say you're having a Halloween party soon, uh, you could say, um, you can encourage your students to use ChatGPT to help them design an activity or a game or a, um, uh, not Jeopardy, but a trivia, <laughs> a trivia match. Um, you can have ChatGPT write some trivia questions for you. So for example, uh, write me three trivia questions for middle school students um, that focus on Halloween. <gasps> Halloween history. Oh, I like this. Okay. What ancient Celtic festival is considered the precursor to Halloween is believed that on this night, the boundary between the living and the dead blurred. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I guess you can process of elimination. So I feel like middle school students would get that right just from process of elimination. They probably don't know what this is, but I would assume that if we're in uh, Western cultures, we would know what these are. And you can adjust uh, for, for you know, different age groups, for different cultures, that sort of thing. Uh, again, bias, uh, we are definitely training on a data set of that's very uh, Western um, oriented, but you can have it do other things. Um, and finally, number four, um, you can have it kind of as a way to check answers. Um, so for example, um, well, I guess you can use other tools on the internet like this to check math answers and things like that, but that's kind of number four. Um, okay, so those are kind of my high level ideas to get you started. There are tons of ways to incorporate ChatGPT into your assignments. And I think that that's really the best way to get your students engaging with it so that, you know, like you don't need to be afraid of it. Your students don't need to be afraid of it. And if you show them how to use it um, uh, intentionally and with integrity, and in a way where it's a collaborator rather than a replacer of their thinking, it can really enhance their ability to do all sorts of things. And also it can help them learn new skills. Um, and, you know, if they have, if they're, if they're a little bit nervous about spelling or grammar or things like that, they can use it to help improve their writing so that they feel a little bit less nervous about those types of things. Okay, cool. So I've rambled on for a really long time about things that I hope were useful to you, but please let me know what you're interested in learning and let's explore this really cool tool together and see how we can use it to build better, uh, to build better systems and to uh, improve uh, learning for our students. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.